Hello, thank you for joining me again on this wild ride of wilderness. Hopefully you enjoyed the rise of Durr. That took me a long time. It's one of those things I just kind of got inspired and then got carried away with it. So it took me like three or four months to do, maybe longer. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, so, uh, that's a nice little WTF video for you. And right now you're just watching me slide back and forth across the screen on my pretend horse. And, man, a lot's been going on. A lot of changes, a lot of announcements or potential announcements, a lot of new possibilities with uh, uh, the whole situation and the the dirt and the gibberish and the surface stuff, a lot of new insights and new uh, perspectives coming to light. And hopefully, once again, it will all come to some type of beautiful something or other conclusion. Okay, in this video we will continue on with architectural dir, and this is part two, and there will be a part three, and then hopefully that will be it for uh, the various types of anomalies series. In this video we will just be continuing on with more images and miscellaneous commentary so, uh, strap in and away we go. About 75 images to cover today. And first up, we have La Sagrada Familia in Barcelona, Spain. And this is one of those that's ongoing. It's been under construction for the last 100 years or more, and it's still going on see the cranes. So I'm not quite sure what exactly I want to say. I guess we saw a bunch of examples of older structures like the pyramids and uh, uh, ancient Sumeria and uh, ancient Peru and all that stuff, but I just want to say it the protocol we're dealing with, um, it extends into modern structures as well. It's ongoing and these 16th, 17th, 18th century structures, they're often part of this protocol or algorithm uh, as well. And good chance that this algorithm or process or protocol is uh, automated. It's just kind of on autopilot, just printing out this gibberish architecture. So we are made to... Um, frame this as like impressive and beautiful but if you take a step back and kind of look at it it's really gaudy and cheesy in my opinion again that's just one man's opinion but um it's like a false um reference point so like we have the modern uh contemporary buildings right here which aren't much to look at not super impressive. And then we have the older stuff, which is more impressive, but uh, still it's like a, a false stand-in, like a, a truly beautiful structure. First of all, wouldn't necessarily be static and stationary. Um, that's the whole illusion of this place. This realm is like solidity. Um, and then to reinforce that, uh, there's various methods, including architecture and uh, very uh, sophisticated management of our reference points and uh, the way we um, think about things, the key uh, archetypes which we triangulate our sense of context off of. These are all kind of hijacked and managed in such a way as to uh, give us Mm. a false sense of beauty, a false sense of which direction to, to go in. Anyways, I don't know that I explained that very well, but 
Um, this is an example, in my opinion, of an attempt to kind of invert history or turn history upside down. So it's like more impressive stuff the further back you go, kind of mixed in in a messy way with less impressive, more modern stuff. So it's kind of like an upside down trajectory, which kind of, it's like running backwards on a treadmill or um, it's like a trick to get us uh, um, to triangulate us in an inverted way so that we move in directions which are unhealthy for us. That would be kind of the general agenda behind it all. And how I'm getting there from just looking at a picture, um, I admit I'm not great at explaining that sometimes. Um, honestly, it's been like four months since I put this set of images together, so I can't remember all the points I really wanted to make. Um, but, uh, and a lot's changed since then, so I'm not sure if I should even still be making videos, but whatever. Um, so this, just the mixture of aesthetics, like the droopy weirdness, the gratuitous spires and gratuitous window holes and stuff. Again, hodgepodge theory or just derp, um, derp salad. And, okay, so in Romania, I thought this meme was mildly amusing. One of the uh, poorest countries builds a cathedral instead of a hospital. So this would be an example of the ongoing script. So it's some type of script unfolding. Um, the Again, possibly automated, but certainly just spitting out these structures uh, in our midst. And in a very sophisticated way. I think it would be like the how of it. I think it's probably like the more autonomous you are, the less, uh, the less you are a minion of this agenda and the less autonomous you are or the less aware you are or something like that. Um, the less you become a tool of the script um, the less it, the less the script can carry out. And, um, that's not to say I'm not accidentally, un uh, being a minion of the script and you too. Um, I'm sure we are. It's just a matter of degree and in what area, um, like I may be accidentally a minion of the script in one way, and you may not be, but you may be a minion of the script in another way, and I may not be. Hopefully that makes sense. But, uh, yeah, so it's just these structures are... Mm, first of all, the general aesthetic of them, it's like they're... Uh, very cheesy and not very sensible, not very practical. And uh, I mean, if you had any doubts that the controllers of this world were not necessarily working towards our best interests, um, just the, the example of these weird structures continuing to be funded where other stuff that we actually need doesn't get funded. Um, that should be a red flag. Okay, anyways, um, I feel like I'm off to a bit of a rough start, but let's keep going. Uh, okay, so this is from a previous video. I'll just reread it. Uh, they, they being whoever is behind all this, not quite sure who, they continually deface and deform their and reconfigure their own works across multiple domains, art, architecture, Earth's surface, government and human affairs, etc. This explains the Notre Dame fire. So this, if you remember recently, a year or two ago, this caught on fire. And again, the, um, uh, jutting this way and that way, the 
haphazard um, events and uh, little catastrophes and oh there's a, a shooting here a fire here a cataclysm here that's all part of a big distraction script uh, a big protocol um, possibly automated uh, algorithm which generates a big dynamic illusion or dynamic facade for us to interface with so the building itself is first of all part of the script and then the fire is likely planned as well or just the the algorithm said okay it's time for another distraction and then it just kind of picked a random location or whatever um something something like that um uh, the World's Fair buildings, so this guy, the Chicago World's Fair, for example, this thing was built in 1893, but then you compare that to a lot of the buildings we build today, which are crap, or very unimpressive. So that's, again, the idea of attempting to hijack the reference points and turn history upside down <clears throat> in an effort to discombobulate us, perhaps. Um, uh, I mean, I feel like we're definitely in some kind of weird ant farm or labyrinth experiment or something like that. And this may be one way it operates, but yeah, this thing caught on fire in 1893 and they tore it down. So they build these big, massive, impressive structures and then they tear them right down. So again, that's a non kind of nonsensical um, turn of events or a just a haphazard uh, 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 to put it in ambiguous vocal tones but uh it's it's kind of just like a herky-jerky event generator um, that makes all these distractions and uh, funky little uh, catastrophes and whatnot to focus on and to channel our consciousness in various ways. Okay, so finish this slide. Uh, the multiple, like the mud flood stuff and the restoration of ancient sites and the, the landscape stuff, all the straight lines and strange patterns and stuff. And again, this may all be automated, likely as a way to discombobulate the population and uh, thus keep us manageable and I'm reminded of the uh, lyric the song lyric from uh, Alien Ant Farm the band um, we used to poke the beehive to relax and rewind so the idea there is that this is kind of a earth is like an ant farm and then every once in a while the controllers or the people in power or behind the scenes, they just kind of shake the beehive or shake the ant farm. Um, uh, for instance, by setting this on fire or by, you know, building a new structure or whatnot, uh, just to see how we react, just to watch us run around, like not knowing what's going on. <laughs> It's kind of an out there theory, but I think there's some truth to it for sure. Okay, this one, not sure where, but just a great example of the gaudy interior. And it's very impressive, I would say, beyond the capabilities of the people at the time. So there's the idea that, okay, well, maybe this is like from a lost empire or something which got covered up. But I'm saying like Tartaria or whatever, but I'm saying, no, it's more likely that this is just yet another rollout of uh, one of many aesthetics, which are part of this protocol, which manages Earth on a long-term basis. So it prints out or, uh, you know, it generates the pyramids uh, and all, all the structures in between then and now including this one, and it's a very rich process which 
renders us, renders us incapable of discerning our true bearings or a true, um, I don't know, origins or place in the universe or whatever. It's, uh, um, and there's more to it. Uh, the richness, uh, there's a lot to discuss. Sorry if I'm a little sloppy today. So this, I think, is in France, Ruin Cathedral or something like that, R-O-U-E-N, and just the fractal nature of it is all gibberish, more or less. It's like false beauty or um, cheesy um, half beauty. And even this, I would say, is likely false damage or uh, false wear or um, perhaps edited in a deceptive manner by uh, restoration efforts, which are not true restoration, but which are more akin to some kind of ongoing cover-up or ongoing um, reshuffling of things such that uh, we can't quite... Uh, stay in one spot for too long and and get a good view of things um so yeah this goofy fractal uh gratuitous uh flying buttress or whatever these things are called facades it's gratuitous facades and all that it's pseudo impressive or quasi impressive but it's just cheese uh yeah, this may or may not be the same structure, same building, but very similar. We've got uh, just um, layer after layer of like the same type of pattern, uh, just getting smaller and smaller. And we see this not just in cathedrals and stuff. Like, look how tiny. Oops, sorry about that. Look how tiny these little uh, details are here. Uh, it's just like a mirror image of the larger patterns and like patterns of patterns of patterns. It's like self-referential -ref at multiple layers of scale. Um, so it's, it's just kind of like you look closer and it's not much and you look closer and it's not much. It's just like an infinite regress of nonsense. Um, so my guess would be, be that these all tell a nearly coherent story like all these figures and stuff but it's like kind of just uh, doesn't add up to anything probably. It's just stand-ins or, or dummy, dummy narratives, dummy f figures, just a rich orgy of details to get lost in, something like that. And this one would be somewhere in Asia, and it's... I'm trying to demonstrate that it's basically the same strategy, just mapped to a slightly different aesthetic. So this is not a different culture doing this. It's like someone just came in and, or the same uh, author that did this, did this. So like, look at this cathedral and like the fractal nature of it and the spires and stuff. And look at this other one in India. Um, and it's just the fractal spires, just and the many, many figures. It's all, um, obviously there's like cultural diffusion and stuff or sharing of ideas and all that. Uh, architecture schools that proliferated throughout Europe and Asia and whatever, allegedly, apparently. Um, not saying that didn't happen, but I'm saying somehow this happens in our midst. Um, and it's not by conventional architects and all that, or it's not by a lost ancient high civilization. Um, it's, it's by like some joker or jester who uh, stands behind the scenes and from, from that control room type environment, they generate all these <laughs> goofy structures and, or it's just automated. It's like a, uh, an AI going haywire or just left unattended, just carrying out its program to generate various cultural aesthetics 
So here we see some of the signature moves or hallmarks of it, the fract fractal nature, the gratuitous spires and all that, just um, purposeless blocked up windows and all that stuff. And then we see similar stuff here, just like this, ah, sorry, having mouse trouble. Um, like these little altars or pillars and stuff, these are just like little fractal nothing burgers. They don't do anything. Um, even some of this wear and damage and all the herky-jerky stonework, the multiple different styles, that may all be feigned or uh, faked. Pretend. It's just a shit show uh, algorithm which generates goofy structures. Same thing here in uh, this is the Elora Caves in India, I believe, might be China, I forget, um, but like these gratuitous little platforms here, not really functional, this mildly suggestive but ultimately perplexing, um, you know, like Ark of the Covenant type things, like, oh, what is it, what is it? And they're, uh, to repeat myself for like the f uh, 45th time, um, with... Uh, some apology there. Uh, this is de deliberately designed to straddle a line between multiple different possible interpretations. Like this could be um, some type of tank or holding chamber uh, or silo for like water or grain. It could be like a friggin spaceship for aliens. It could be these could be like little landing pads or altars or um, even flowers, uh, you know, again, like an Ark of the Covenant thing. These could be gorillas guarding something. They could be signifying, you know, the cardinal directions, north, south, west, whatever. Um, so it's connotation soup. It's uh, implication soup, and it's maximized for um, sp uh, splaying out uh, the possible interpretations of this site into like 10 or 15 different directions. So um, it, it kind of like splinters uh, the student's um, study. So it's like a, that's what I, I guess that's one way of putting it. It's like designed to splinter the attention of the beholder. Uh, that's one possible purpose for this type of site and the type of um, methodology behind its design. So like here we have a partially submerged or partially obscured uh, version of this guy. So it's like, why is that? Well, it's because it's kind of algorithm generated in a very calculated way. And uh, I mean, not that a human couldn't come up with this design, but it's, to me, it's, it's just, it's all reeking or smelling of the same author between all these different sites across cultures and continents. It's just cheesy, gratuitous detail, the fractals, the silly windows, it's all reeking of the same hand or the same algorithm, same author. Same thing here in Jordan, this is Petra, and these big impressive structures, these meandering trails which don't amount to really anything, some somewhat eroded statues, somewhat, uh, you know, parts of this are pristine, parts are heavily eroded looking, although I would suggest again that some of, some of that erosion is uh, faked or designed that way. Um, so like this guy would be all, uh, generated already, you know, blurry like that or eroded looking. And then, um, again, it's just a purposeless structure reminiscent of Washington DC and any kind of authoritative structure, certainly Greece and all that. Um, and to me, that's just because it's part of the same uh, Sim City type of printout of uh, silly uh, packaged or uh, 
cookie cutter, uh, ready-made uh, architectural aesthetics. Uh, so, and yeah, so we could imagine just taking like a library of possible structures and making a few minor adjust adjustments in your console or computer and then you just print it out or just tell your little implementation device to go create this thing and your little plasma ball goes out and uh, creates this structure and again it's a big deception a big grand facade so it wouldn't surprise me even if like this structure and this structure and this and this it wouldn't even surprise me if these were all built in the same exact day or like a few minutes apart from each other just somebody did a big number on earth and uh, so some of this is on a piecewise uh, little by little basis and then I think there are some events or uh, some surges in um, you know where a lot happens at once they just build a lot of this stuff at the same time like do a complete rewrite or something like that like you might do in Age of Empires or SimCity or one of those video games world building video games all right so this is the Longmen grottos in China same type of deal we've got these big um, edifices or uh, structures these deities we've got these somewhat randomly distributed caves and holes which are part of the uh, algorithm as well it's just kind of random meandering stuff with random grooves and holes all over Petra as I think I've showed before uh, some precision mixed with some lack of precision uh, as yet another uh, way of stirring the mix or uh, making it more confusing so we've got some precision some lack of precision some uh, restoration um, it's very herky-jerky I think that's a good way of describing it and again same type of idea here in Egypt so this is China just the big um, generic deities and here in Egypt, some slight variations um, or some somewhat major variations in the aesthetic, but uh, same general idea. You've got goofy headwear, goofy details on the face, got random holes and stuff and uh, cutouts and the pose. It's just supercharged for Enigma, um, not to mention the hieroglyphics themselves and any number of symbols strewn about here uh, same thing Petra just figures and animals and just a big shit show uh, same thing again more of Egypt the head of a man body of an animal uh, very cartoonish feet but a mixture of a bunch of silly things and same thing at Easter Island just uh, the same strategy of figurines and deities and very large, uh, Im almost impossibly large structures, um, you know, just beyond the reach of what we should have been able to do at the time, according to the conventional narrative, and that's strategically designed that way. And then it's mapped to a slightly different aesthetic, again, just to make it somewhat believable, and then some variation here. Again, variation on the headwear and various hand positions and stuff that's all computer generated or at least algorithm managed so silly nonsensical variations on the headwear and I should possibly mention that there's a chance that the there's yet another layer of meaning behind all this so like at one layer you recognize that it's all gibberish and then at another layer you're like oh wait there's an actual pattern in it and I've seen some strange uh, hints and implications um, so maybe I'll talk more about that in the future but silly headwear silly figurines all hallmarks of the same 
author's uh, handiwork. Okay, so this is in Greece somewhere, I believe, and it's some type of amph amphitheater. We get a good look at kind of how much of a shit show it is. And uh, when you see the close-up photos, you just see random holes in the concrete, very haphazard and meandering grooves in the concrete. It's a lot of precision, a lot of um, sloppy lack of precision as well. Again, the combination of sloppy and not sloppy together to create a confusing muddle. And then a lot of false windows and stuff carved out of the, the walls, just not amounting to much, very purposeless and gratuitous. Just another example of derp. Uh, slightly similar, but somewhat different thing here in Udayagiri Hills in India. And we've got this building which is very nonsensically um, enveloped by this rocky, solid rock uh, cliffside here. We've got the gratuitous lines, gratuitous grooves, uh, gratuitous holes, awkward little alcoves, uh, nearly sensical, um, but, um, you know, suggestive of a cave or a, a room or an altar or something like that, but ultimately just kind of a uh, half feature or a half-hearted uh, pseudo feature and lots of stuff going on here in this Greece um, example. And you might suppose that this is quarry stuff, but maybe some of it is, but in general, it's just a shit show, a deliberate shit show, which is really like in your face and even like this right here, uh, like the, the steps and then this blob of stone in the middle, what they just built around it and said, ah, eh, fuck it. <laughs> we'll make this super precise and then, you know, and this super precise and then oh, screw it. We'll just go around it. Something like that. So a lot of um, potentially contradictory motives in the uh, construction um, thought process assuming this was somehow legitimate. So this is very similar to this thing in Ponza, Italy. So here in India, just got a bunch of crap etched into the rocky hillside and then basically the same thing here in Italy, um, you know, a thousand miles away or so. And uh, these gratuitous grooves and um, alleged boat um, what, what do you call it? Uh, houses, it houses a boat, um, like a slip, I guess they're called, or, you know, whatever you park your boat in, or something like that, but that doesn't really make much sense. You're gonna go to all this effort just to park your boat in here sometimes? I don't know about that. Um, and then little, like, little fractal ones, and all sorts of variations. You've got some, like, suggestive potential holes up here which may be the same same author same methodology but just with a more natural look to it um, you know because this algorithm is doing variation upon variation of all the various themes it utilizes so this these lines here are like a slightly more natural looking variation on this theme of a gratuitous groove across the rock. It's like a geometric motif. And then the, even these holes, uh, gratuitous holes, and this larger gratuitous hole here could be argued that it's kind of a, the same principle, just with a slightly different aesthetic here. So it's a different scale, so it's larger here, and then it's rounded uh, rounded at the top, and then it has a different suggested uh, application. So, uh, same author though, in my opinion. Same thing with Darren Kuyu in Turkey. That's that underground um, city. And it's one of those big mysteries that pops up on History Channel and Science Channel, Discovery Channel, and all those. And it's like, oh, wh wh what were they hiding from? Or you know, was it to hide from invaders or from aliens or why, why did they build this underground city? Uh, well, they didn't. It's the same people who did, or same author who did Ponza and this and gr this 
crap in Greece and uh, Easter Island, Egypt, all that. It's just uh, silly, slappy, um, herky-jerky stonework, uh, which is rather nonsensical, but just sensical enough and just rustic looking enough that we take it kind of seriously as a legitimate um, part of our history. But I would say it's not legitimate. Not that people didn't organically just kind of uh, retro fit the site for their own needs after, you know, after it was created by this tooler of earth or whatever. Um, you know, I'm sure if you're a tribe of humans wandering along and you find a, find this underground site here, you might as well utilize it. So some of what we find here is going to be organic human history. Uh, however, I would argue that much or most of the these little circular doors and most of the details here are going to be... Uh, phony so like these circular doors this is not a legitimate or I mean a strategic or um, what's the word I'm looking for pragmatic practical it's not a pra practical way to block up a door I mean if you have if you have this kind of time on your hands or this ability to work with stone you're just gonna do this hunky junky um, solution for a door to block up this thing it's like it doesn't even fit first of all it's like a different uh maybe it kind of fits but it's not a snug fit and that it's just like too much work like you would never move this door back and forth and back and forth it's so uh, i mean so that's why they hypothesize that it's like a big defense fortress or whatever but no it's just a big um orgy of suggestion suggestivity um, suggested possible um, uses but it's it's nonsense salad so like even this one is like sealed in it seems I mean maybe some of it is restoration or just to keep it from falling on um, tourists or whatever but uh, the wheel in general is like a yet another geometric motif which I'll hopefully touch on in the future um, yeah, I can't remember everything I wanted to say for Darren Kuyu. I'll just quickly go through a couple of these images. So again, it looks like a Disneyland attraction to me, just like I would say all these tool marks are phony and the flowy stone, the uh, meandering foot of these uh, uh, walls, if you want to call them walls, it's, um, it's all in a calculated uh, rustic or um, pseudo primitive aesthetic. And then here, of, of course, they just randomly decide to do a nice and precise stretch of block work. And then um, with a big random groove in the middle <laughs> and again, all these sloppy holes. So the precision mixed with the derpiness, um, uh, buffoonery or um, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to personify the aesthetic of um, the sheer silliness of this place like the oh I'm a uh, I'm a precise well-engineered wall oh, no I'm not <laughs> you know it kind of gets all herky-jerky and sloppy and uh, kind of uh, deforms into from one aesthetic into another aesthetic into yet another aesthetic and it's it's just a shit show again as a big deception a big uh false history um plopped in there for us to uh reference off of and uh it's like a i don't know what the true purpose of it is but like just an experiment or like an ant farm type type of thing where they just someone just makes a big false history and sees how we respond to it you know <laughs> maybe just for learning purposes or whatever like even these like divots and grooves we could make a case that that's like 
I don't know, for washing your hands or like little water wells or grain storage or any number of practical things, even religious purposes, but I'm saying these are designed to look like they could be that. And they're also designed just poorly enough that they, um, they make themselves discoverable as gibberish. So this is just gibberishy patterns, which are, you know, 85% functional looking. <clears throat> so it's like, hey computer, give me, um, give me a wall which looks 85% uh, legit and 15% total gibberish. And then it gives you something like this. Um, I mean, even our current understanding of computer technology and algorithms and deep learning and AI and all that, we could pull that off in, you know, in a jiffy. It's pretty easy uh, task once you have the general principles um, in place and if you have enough computing power at your disposal. So if you had enough computing power, you could basically uh, generate a whole slew or slurry of 10 or 15 different ancient cultures, all with varying levels of apparent age and apparent histories and preconditions. And you could just print all that out more or less in really a matter of minutes or hours or days or years at the most. So I think that's kind of what happened. Again, I'm suggesting these are phony tool marks. Again, the meandering non-level walls and the general herky-jerkiness of it. So these um, gratuitous divots, which we could argue are byproducts of construction and or little cubby holes to store something or whatever. But even this like little indentation here, these little indentations alongside this window, it's all um, calculated um, gibberish with, uh, with a flair for non-gibberish as well. So like, again, 85% functional, 15% gibberish or something like that. And then the tool marks, not even trying that hard to look like tool marks. They look pretty fake to me. Um, so this whole tunnel would be just kind of printed out by some kind of high technology with false indications of uh, primitive construction methods. <clears throat> and the flowy nature of the ground as well, like the uh, haphazard rise and fall and kind of odd angles and um, it's like they didn't finish their work. They went to all this effort to uh, carve this tunnel or whatever and then they didn't even bother to make a level floor. Like making a level floor is like one of the first things you would want to do, right? Um, and that's another thing you'll notice with castles and a lot of these European uh, structures, um, medieval and whatever. It's like they didn't bother to make a, <laughs> a level floor. <laughs> I can't even say that without laughing. Because like they build this magnificent castle and then they leave the walls and floor like somewhat sloppy looking like this very unnavigable um, cobblestone kind of look to it, like the uneven wobbles in the stone. And I think that's part of a play on our psyche, like kind of a, a in-your-face gaslighting type of thing. Like that we, we're told one way that it is, but then the details that we take in, such as the sloppy floor and all the details which don't quite add up to a coherent story, this all conflicts with our... Um, intellectual understanding of the place or like the story we're told in the history books. So uh, it kind of induces a almost a split in our psyches like because we have uh, the direct evidence at one level and then we have the story about the direct evidence telling us a different story. So those two different directions kind of do a number on us. Um, you know, they discombobulate us. <clears throat> that may be Part of the agenda behind it all. Okay, so star forts. Again, I apologize for not quite remembering what 
point I wanted to make here. I think the main thing I just want to say is uh, I think it's all part of the same pattern generating nonsense machine. Uh, yeah, it's like designed in a very impressive way with an, with an eye for, um, for making it make sense to multiple different uh, layers of interpretation. Like these angles here, they do make sense as a, uh, like a defense posture or a bastion, you know, to uh, give yourself more surface area so that you can surround the enemy a little bit and shoot more arrows at them if they attack you. But I think that whole cat, like kings and castles and like, armies and uh, like the whole warring swor swords and bows and arrows thing and the, the Game of Thrones aesthetic in general, I think that's kind of a false uh, implant on our history. So I don't know that the whole Game of Thrones era really happened. I mean, I know that's just a fiction, but this this design presupposes like marauding, like super attacks. Like this is like overkill and it's like, again, a mixture of old engineering and fairly um, impressive engineering. And, hmm, this one in Kazakhstan, I believe the remains of one and uh, wouldn't surprise me if this was never even a legitimate one. Like if it was, maybe this was brought into being already as remains as possible. Uh, I don't know about that. Here we've got some surface detail stuff like fake looking curves, possibly windshield wiper sweep, that type of thing. Got a lot of gratuitous rectangles down here, which may be any number of things, uh, old footprints of buildings or whatever. Um, <clears throat> but I'm just going to go out on a limb and say that this is just another cultural aesthetic of whatever protocol generated all this crap and all the China and Europe stuff and Italy and India. It's all the same general agenda, but just now Star Forts is yet another, um, uh, Geom geometric motif or uh, architectural motif, uh, cultural motif. So, yeah. So let's talk about Yonaguni in Japan for a moment. This is that underground um, rock muffin, if you will. It's like a angular rock mesa, kind of. So it's got all these angles. And there's all this speculation. Is it natural? Is it artificially sculpted? Is it like an old structure from an ancient uh, civilization or whatever? Certainly there's an aspect of uh, artificiality to it. Um, you see these very clean uh, cuts and faces, but again, it's not amounting to anything sensical or truly architectural. So I would highly doubt that this is from a legitimate uh, ancient high civilization um, endeavor or uh, structure. I'm saying this is just a uh, computer generated more or less uh, m mixture of the natural aesthetic and the architectural aesthetic. So again, if you ask your computer, hey, print me out a hill, which looks 65% uh, architectural and 35% uh, natural, then it might spit out something like this. So it's in that weird in-between thing. So it's neither natural nor architectural. It's a calculated deceptive meld of both, <laughs> which, uh, it's quite funny when you think about it. 
in, in kind of a dark humor sense, uh, kind of way, but, uh, again, just certainly artificial looking angles, uh, potentially like natural, like crystalline, uh, like, you know, how Chris, uh, rocks crystallize or snowflakes crystallize in kind of angular ways and, um, just, uh, according to natural law or whatever, or, um, the, the elements or uh, weather conditions. So you might suspect that this is like some type of crystallization or natural mineralization. Um, it certainly looks like it could be that a little bit, and then it looks like it could be architectural, but then again, what is it? And it's uh, a nothing burger. So here's a comparison of Yonaguni with Saxe Waman in Peru. And again, basically the same thing. It's just, if you turn the dial from 65% architectural to 85% uh, architectural, uh, then you get something more like this. So uh, this is a little bit more uh, definitively artificial. I mean, uh, this might be 95% artificial looking. Um, and then from there, we could say, okay, let's make it uh, look... 85% like a quarry and 15% like a bench. <laughs> and then we've got these little gratuitous round holes too. So it's just a shit show nothing burger. And here's another spot at Saxe Waman, just a big rock muffin, very similar to Yonaguni, just this one happens to be above water. So uh, all these silly rectangles and er, 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 er. And uh, I believe this is a staircase on it that broke away and um, so presumably this is like quarry work, but I don't think so. I think it's just derp here as well. Saxe and Woman still. And then compare that to this place in Italy. This is Sacro Bosco, I, I think it's called, or Parco de Mostri in Italy. And we've got this little rock muffin similar to in uh, similar in aesthetic to uh, Yonaguni and also Saxe Waman. So let's take a look at a few images of this guy. Um, just kind of silly, haphazard meandering scoop marks and suggestive features and a few different angles here. It's kind of quarry-like, kind of um, ambiguous, and that ambiguity is very calculated in my opinion. That's kind of tool marks and indications of any number of things. And then for reference, here's New Mexico and the United States, Bandelier National Monument. And we've got this stretch of rock, um, which is, again, very herky-jerky like the top of the, this rock in Italy, halfway around the world. So a lot of these rocks or stonework is just phony... Um, ambiguity. It's uh, quasi-architectural, quasi-quarry, quasi-natural uh, and volcanic. It's a mixture. And then of course Phrygian Valley in Turkey. We've, Turkey, we've got these whole fields of seemingly excavated but very cryptic uh, tracks or potential tracks. So uh, we've got these fields of uh, what look like quarried or worked over stone and uh, compare that to this in Italy. Uh, again, same basic idea, idea, just a slightly different aesthetic. Uh, again, the idea of a nothing burger or a nonsensical shit show just mapped to slightly different parameters and aesthetics and geometrical motifs. So little variations, maybe we have little lines of circular dots and stuff like that. So it's su suggestive of certain construct construction methods and or um, uh, purposes for the site, but that's all deceptive and falsely uh, implied. Okay, so Turkey, Italy, Turkey, Italy, same deal basically. And then uh, 
for icing on the cake. Again, the inscription to this place in Italy where this rock is says, O traveler, tell me if all that you are about to see is merely art or was it made to bewilder you? And again, we've got the lady on the animal, like the weird hybrid with like eight breasts and weird legs and haphazard stonework. And then I did my own translation of one of these, um, or I did my best. You go there, or I just used, pasted it into Google. You think it is wise to go here, then tell me if the many, I don't know, are made for deception or purely for art. So are these many attractions purely for art or are they there for deception purposes? And it's right there in your face telling you at the uh, inscription for this uh, statue. Here's another spot in the same park, just a random window hole thing. It's again with gratuitous grooves and indentations. Basically uh, a shit show with false implications in every nook and cranny of it. <laughs> and then we've got stuff like this, these goofy figures. It's just like holding an empty plaque and then this uh, meandering edge of this um, uh, well, I don't know what this is, like a bench or a wall or something, somewhere in between. Uh, just a stupid acorn for no real reason. Frills, uh, just gratuitous fluff, um, you know, like filler detail. And then, so stuff like this is kind of a truth drop or a giveaway or a deliberate uh, mistake. Uh, like right here on the face of this, like it should be a flat face, presumably, but like there's a, a big blob that they left unexcavated. They just said, ah, screw it. We won't do the middle. We won't finish this. We'll make this pretty. We'll make this pretty. But here we will just do as derpy of a job as possible. And you see this edge meanders as well. And some of the proportions, like they suggest that this is not legitimate erosion and accretion of um, debris or anything like that. This is like, this is how they made it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's created in this pseudo rustic aesthetic, which is, uh, again, is it art or is it for deception or bewilderment purposes? And more silly structures here, these um, big orgy of silly characters adding to the mystery, which cannot be solved because it's not a real mystery. Um, what else? Yeah, just stuff like this, the silly mixture of details, the combining things that don't go together, that's one strategy. So wings, tits, legs, a tail, uh, fancy headwear. Fancy headwear is another thing that maps to many of these different cultures or pretend cultures like Easter Island, the Silly hats and Egypt, the silly hats. Here we have a silly hat. And this guy with spiral arms. Again, spiral, a big motif. Um, I think possibly representative of the maze or the labyrinth aspect of it. Possibly, I might talk more on that in the future. Um, this deliberately off-kilter building and with silly... Uh, fluff details or filler details, very cheesy aesthetic. This one, um, let's zoom in here and see. <laughs> this is like pomp, like empty pomp and circumstance. So empty prestige or like very cheesy um, attempts at uh, pseudo authority and um, like, um, pseudo prestige or elegance. So this is like um, fluff, like elegant fluff, if that makes sense. Hopefully I explained that okay. Um, so like, and then again, just like an empty oval over here, it's like, like gratuitous details. So this, like this alone right here, this uh, um, carving or whatever you want to call it, that's like a very large truth, truth drop to me as to the meth 
methodology behind this whole site, you know, the structure of the site and all of the historical shenanigans, which we might call the tooling of Earth. It's just like empty details, uh, like amounting to nothing. Like, this is just like uh, if I just stood up and shouted a bunch of words that almost sounded like words, that, but I didn't actually say anything with meaning, then it, it might look something like this. Like, this is the architectural or um, artistic equivalent of me saying, how did you could do you know what I mean? It's just, uh, <laughs> it's the principle of gibberish mapped to uh, the domain of symbology, perhaps. And then the whole aesthetic of pillars and arches and um, caps, stones and all that, that's like a fake, uh, fake authority or a phony authoritarian aesthetic. And then this is like basically telling you how fake it is with its fakeness. All right, so um, one more example here, this fountain. Um, in particular, this stripe of stone down the middle of it. So, um, okay, it's a fountain, whatever. We can, we can work with that. Nice little tunnel here for no real reason, but no biggie. But it's these stripes of stone, maybe even this horizontal layer as well. But this interrupting layer of stonework, it's like a truth drop. Or it's telling you what a goof show um, it is. Um, within its own uh, makeup. So, these tool marks, first of all, I would say are probably fake. Uh, and then, yeah, these stones which don't need to be there. So, like, mm, like, are these actual rocks? Like, this looks like it's made to be, look like its own boulder sitting on top of this one, but then they look like they're connected, right? So, it's like made to look like two boulders, but it's one connected piece of rock. Like same thing right here. It's like boulder, boulder, or you know, block, 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 block. But you can't really see the uh, uh, delineations between them. So that could just be due to really <laughs> expert masonry work. I don't think that's what's going on. I think it's a very um, sophisticated meld of shoddy mixed with uh, derpy, mixed with not derpy, mixed with, you know, a couple things which don't quite add up to a coherent picture and which have a, a discombobulating effect on the observer. So this, uh, keep this stripe in mind, the idea behind it, and then let's go to Pompeii in Italy, and what do we have? We have another of the same thing basically, just a random stripe of brick. Like look at this, like this random shoddy work of crap, like purposeless junk here. And then if you take a closer look at the rest of Pompeii, it's basically the same thing or similar general idea behind it uh, for the whole site. It's like not necessarily this, uh, single line of brick, you don't necessarily see that everywhere, but you see the idea of a shit show everywhere, like these half-broken walls and uh, the uneven ceilings and uneven uh, ground and uh, crooked everything. Okay, and so I, just to round up this point, we've got this stray stripe of rock there and a wall in Pompeii and then this in this park in Italy which is artwork uh, we have uh, at this particular artwork installation or attraction this fountain here we have this stripe here so I think this is a truth drop saying hey look look around for this like look go looking for where you might find this strategy here and uh, ask yourself what it implies. So, to me it implies that Pompeii is just a phony site as well, and Rome in general. Okay, so let's shift gears a little bit to 
Uh, so these images, I think I showed briefly in a previous video. I want to revisit them real quick. So multiple phases of construction or just pretending to be that way. So there's the idea here of this wall. This is in Cusco, I believe, Peru. So there's this wall in one aesthetic and then there's this in a slightly different aesthetic. But if you look down here, you see it's like not quite clear where one starts and where the other begins. So like this block is similar to these blocks above it, but then this block here is like half in this aesthetic and then half in this aesthetic. It's like continuously deformed as we go from left to right. It's like almost a block over here and almost a unfinished stone over here. Um, slightly, I mean, it could be retrofitting or um, what, what you call it, uh, just reworking of existing stones to make it look better. But I mean, uh, there's so many gratuitous odd details here, like this lump on this uh, block here. Like this uh, looks like a log vertically and these gratuitous divots and shallow things. And then, um, so, see, I have a tough time demonstrating it definitively, but I suspect that this is both by the same hand in just a slightly different aesthetic, and there might be a better example. So same thing here, Cusco again. So it's like as we go from top to bottom and then back up over here, there's a continuous deform almost from one aesthetic to another. So we have a more or less uniform block aesthetic here with kind of the knobs and the patchy whatever polygonal blocks. And then around here, it starts to look kind of similar, but kind of different. And then this one is like still similar enough over here or similar enough to this block over here, but it's starting to look more like these as well. So it's like, as we go from here to here and up, we get a continuous deform, <clears throat> deform, excuse me, from one aesthetic to another. So these blocks are kind of similar to these puffy ones, but not quite. They're starting to look more like these up here. And then these are um, quite different by the time you get up here. So a number of explanations for that, including many conventional down to earth ones. But uh, I don't know, I'm saying it's just one person doing a, um, a deceptive maneuver with the, uh, the wall as a whole. <clears throat> so rather than part of the wall broke away or was damaged or rem uh, dis disassembled and then they reassembled it with uh, more rough stonework, I think it's all one goofy project. Okay, so here, kind of a similar thing. These are goofy, uh, still Cusco, goofy damage patterns. So I don't think this is legitimate damage. I, th I just think it's gratuitous um, surface details. Again, the idea of an orgy of rich details, rich variations, Vari variation upon variation in a uh, continuously deforming um, fashion sometimes. So like, like this block here, uh, it's looking like the block next to it, like this top little s portion of it looks pretty normal or similar surface texture to over here. And then over here, it just becomes rough. So it's like, why is that? Is that a legitimate damage pattern? Or, hmm, it doesn't, Maybe, maybe you can find something that I'm overlooking or that I forgot to mention, but it's a spidey senses thing for me. Like, <laughs> it's just phony variations. Okay, and then this is a better image, I think. So we've got these two distinct styles. We've got this precise work down here, and then this just kind of uh, shoddy, um, not so calculated work up here. But if we look closely, uh, ignoring some of these goofy, gratuitous details for a moment, like the knobs and the grooves, 
but we see again the idea of a kind of continuous deform from one aesthetic to the next. Like take a look at this stone for example. Is this in the same style as this or is it in the same style as like this? It's like halfway in between, right? Um, so like this block here, it's almost uh, like precise and you can kind of see it has a weird contour to it there. Um, this one just randomly puffy for no reason. <clears throat> and then this one, this joinery right here, it's like they, um, they said, okay, we'll make one face a really tight fit, but the other faces, no reason. Just, uh, just do whatever. So like, this looks like a calculated fit here, but then it, there's like less, um, precise over here. And uh, what else? So, and like, look at this block right here. It's like, it changes its mind halfway. <laughs> like, okay, maybe, I mean, maybe the presence of the block above it changes the erosion pattern a little bit. Mm, but I would say that is feigned rather than legitimate. And like, especially like this goofy nublet here, like there's no real reason that needs to be there. These are all deliberate tooth, truth drops in my opinion, or deliberate mistakes, um, deliberate uh, internal contradictions. <clears throat> and so this is Machu Picchu again, these just uh, kind of islands of damage. Like the whole wall looks fairly perfect and then just these two blocks have this uh, fairly clean uh, damage pattern, or uh, not clean, but um, uh, controlled or um, isolated to this one area. Uh, same kind of thing here. It's like, how did this one corner of this one block get damaged like that? It's very odd. And then this right here, it's like, what the heck is going on there? It's like a block carved on top of a uh, the natural bedrock. So it's like this is completely nonsensical right here. <clears throat> okay, let's just move on. Baalbek, uh, I don't want to spend too much time on this one, but slight chance that, or a strong chance, I guess, that these uh, different aesthetics are all just uh, variations on, um, you know, made to look like different eras of construction and reconstruction, but it's really just one, one idea with multiple aesthetics in a deceptive way. And one truth drop here is these haphazard holes, these random square holes here. Oh, oh, oh now we're circular holes. Now we're slightly oval and oblong. Uh, this one has like a double channeled edge. Um, yeah, these these are all, it's like a, a just a big shit show, which is made to look like a historical site. And then this, I think this is in Spain, Walls of Lugo, maybe. And yeah, so we've got this aesthetic here, and then this aesthetic to the stonework, and then something kind of filling in in the middle, presumably due to damage but just uh, hypothesizing that it's not, and it's uh, deceptively made to look that way. And for a better case study here, we have this groove going across multiple different rocks, just straight through. And an arrow couldn't do this, a trebuchet I don't think could do this, or like a, you know, a blow from a heavy weaponry. I don't think it would create such a clean groove across multiple stones. Um, it might shatter and break the stones, but uh, this is more like a, a very clean, smooth groove. And you can make the case that it was, it's like eroded over the centuries, so it became clean and smooth, you know, from water erosion or whatever. But even so, it's still like a fairly clean trajectory. Um, it doesn't really make sense as a legitimate damage pattern from war, in my opinion. And 
And then the idea of these gratuitous holes, of course, gratuitous grooves. Like, these aren't windows, these are just random square holes and stuff. Pol polygonal, uh, just goofy, goofy, goofy. And then uh, we should ask the question, is this top layer uh, from a different construction effort as this bottom layer? Or is it one effort with two different uh, deceptive aesthetics? Okay, this one, I don't know, Italy or something. And yeah, we see the multiple uh, little patches of different eras or suggested eras of construction. We've got protruding blocks, we've got recessed blocks, we've got patchy repair work, allegedly bricked up partial archways and all this and the just random rectangles and grooves and lines. So it's just a shit show again and probably a fake indication of multiple eras of history. And I think this is the last image here. So the idea of restoration and or um, uh, revamping of these structures as a way to uh, keep shuffling the deck, so to speak, or keep um, uh, keep us from being able to verify the true story, true history of these sites. So again, this may have all been brought into being at once, and then there's a possibility that it's in addition to that. Uh, there's silly uh, restorations or um, ongoing revamps that make it even more difficult to discern what's going on or what the true history of this place is. So like this pulling, pulling the rug out from under you one little brick at a time and then replacing it with a, a derpy block, <laughs> uh, if that makes sense. So um, yeah, uh, I have a lot more to say on a lot of stuff and uh, I guess just tune in for the next video. All right, see ya.